Hi everyone. Good evening. Hope uh, you are all having uh, a great conference. Almost uh, the end of uh, second day. <laughs> Thanks for making it. Um, well, we have about uh, 30 minutes, so um, we will try to cover a, a general introduction of uh, what this project is about, and then the actual topic is also uh, about uh, security controls. Um, so today we are talking about uh, some security considerations when you're doing chaos engineering. That, that's the topic. Uh, I'll go a little bit uh, um, deep into it. Uh, before we start, a bit of introductions. Uh, uh, I'm Uma Mukara, uh, head of chaos engineering at Harness. I co-created this uh, project, Litmus Chaos, in 2018, along with uh, Karthik and few others. Um, I continue to maintain uh, this project. Um, so we have a team of a great uh, line of maintainers uh, who are at Hardens right now. And I have with me today, uh, Raj. Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Raj Das and I'm one of the Litmus maintainers and uh, I'm a senior software engineer at Harness. And apart from this, I am also a contributor to uh, many projects like Kiverno, Prometheus and a few others. Yeah, uh, that's uh, all about me. All right. Um, so I, I just really want to know a, a little bit about audience here. Uh, how many of you are aware of uh, chaos engineering or how many of you are using Litmus? Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so that really means that, you know, it, uh, it's good to spend some time on um, wh what is Litmus, why, what's the journey, right? Um, but actually today's topic, uh, there were some questions, hey, you know, uh, are you talking about uh, security chaos engineering or security for chaos engineering, right? So that, that so I just wanted to make it a uh, bit clear here. Um, chaos engineering for security is about running chaos experiments to assert that there are um, either security weaknesses or there are no security weaknesses, right? And uh, security for chaos engineering is you're anyway doing chaos engineering, chaos uh, experiments in your environment, and you're making sure that you're doing it securely, right? And what we are talking about is the second topic, right, today. And uh, towards the end, I'll, uh, if time permits, I'll cover uh, in general, you know, if you want to run some security chaos experiments, uh, what are those? And you know, the, uh, the Litmus project in general is a to go there but I can uh, talk to that, uh, some of those uh, scenarios. So what we uh, talk today is um, introduce uh, Litmus in general and uh, some of the security challenges or considerations once you start implementing chaos engineering as a practice, uh, what are the security challenges and uh, possible mitigations around that, how to solve them. Um, so what we do is we take each of those uh, five or six examples and then uh, my colleague here, Raj, uh, will actually demonstrate how you would do that, right? And then um, depending on how much time we have, we'll talk about uh, where Litmus is going uh, later uh, this year and beyond and um, some general guidelines on how you can contribute uh, to the project, right? So what is chaos engineering, right? I mean, you must have heard uh, a lot about chaos engineering as break things on purpose, right? And then, you know, kill everything or just monkeying around, all that stuff. Uh, chaos engineering has evolved uh, a lot more uh, in the last uh, four to five years. So it is kind of a, you know, a regular DevOps practice where um, you are focusing on introducing some structural faults or expected faults uh, that's part of your, uh, you know, uh, software development life cycle or software product life cycle, and then be in control of those faults and observe whether your software has enough resilience or not. Try to put um, chaos tests into your DevOps and then uh, complete your reliability testing. That's, that's what today it is, uh, you know, um, most usage for, right? Chaos engineering still has a lot of um, 
relevance into avoiding outages or uh, reducing outages but chaos engineering has been uh, used more and more in you know uh, on, on the left side of your uh, software delivery life cycle right in QA pipelines primarily for Kubernetes and the reason uh, there's a strong reason for that uh, one of them is Kubernetes itself is uh, architected on the reconciliation basis that means uh, there's always chaos happening on Kubernetes, right? So, which is pod delete, right? Pod deletes are not a problem. Pod deletes is what is expected to get to a better state, right? If you're a Kubernetes developer, you're always writing code to reconcile yourself into a particular state. Uh, you assume that uh, pod deletes are happening, right? So, you think of that as a one type of chaos and then try to um, introduce more such faults into what you do as a developer and then uh, build resilience tests or uh, assertion tests around it. Um, so that's that's really uh, what chaos engineering and it's, it's kind of a culture that's uh, been introduced into the development teams um, recently. And uh, Litmus is a chaos engineering project. Uh, it's evolved from being, um, you know, a small set of tests where uh, you have a Kubernetes job, um, uh, where you can uh, go introduce some uh, faults to all the way uh, what it is today, um, where it, it's a complete infrastructure to think, design, implement, um, execute, and monitor this chaos test, um, you know, from end to end basis. It's a complete platform. So I'll spend uh, 30 seconds on um, how we uh, got there, right? So we started with some Kubernetes jobs uh, in 2017, 18, and then uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, we provide uh, the opportunity to write chaos test as you write any other YAML file, um, right, of uh, Kubernetes, right? So make it completely declarative. And uh, then we introduced custom resources, uh, chaos custom resources operator, uh, etc. And um, that's where the chaos experiment became um, a well understood concept um, uh, within Litmus. And uh, one of the important topics uh, when you try to do chaos experimentation is how do you measure your steady state, right? Introducing fault is one thing, but making sure that you are capable of measuring your steady state to a very granular extent is even more important. I can bring down the part, but how do I measure, um, you know, certain key states? So that's where we introduced probes. So resilience probes or chaos probes uh, allow you to declaratively define and manage your expectations. So chaos engineering is break something and also observe something. It need not be a complete uh, downtime. It could be uh, the latency is 5% more than what I expect. That's that's not a good thing. Uh, that could lead to an eventual outage or a business uh, issue. So that could be a problem to your resilience. So being able to declaratively write resilience probes is an important thing that was introduced in our journey. And then uh, once you have your developers being able to write experiments, uh, and steady states, how do you actually expand this chaos test into your CACD systems? Because that's where most of your dev work is done, right? So we introduced APIs uh, where um, you can construct a chaos experiment using our uh, tool, UI tool, or uh, manually get some experts to uh, do it, but then use chaos APIs to inject them into pipelines, right? So, um, and then how do you actually share these chaos experiments across your teams? Uh, we introduce chaos hubs. So chaos hub um, is a placeholder for your fine tuned chaos experiments within your teams. And uh, if you have, let's say uh, a team of uh, uh, 15 to 20 developers, only one or two need to write those chaos experiments. The others can just go and, you know, insert them. Uh, into the pipelines or schedule them. So that's how chaos engineering actually eventually gets adopted within the organization. So today, uh, Litmus uh, is fully featured in terms of, um, you know, being highly declarative. It has got a chaos operator, uh, probes, and chaos hubs. Altogether, 
you have an end-to-end -end tool set for practicing chaos engineering on Kubernetes. Right, so this is just a glimpse of uh, um, what we uh, do today, right? So uh, it's got uh, a deep scheduling capabilities. Uh, you can uh, schedule uh, chaos experiments as a workflow. It uses Argo workflow underneath. Uh, you can put uh, chaos experiments in parallel or, or in sequence, however you want. And uh, we got Prometheus chaos metrics um, to go and put the context of chaos onto your observability systems. And uh, we also discover some of the assets and provide you uh, during the workflow creation process. Uh, here are the assets or pods or resources uh, that you can go and uh, inject chaos on, right? And uh, Litmus also provides a centralized control plane. That means uh, uh, when you're expanding chaos in your systems, you need to install Litmus only on one uh, cluster, and then you can connect hundreds of clusters to it and uh, continue to uh, manage chaos from one single place, right? So that's a bit of introduction uh, to um, chaos engineering and uh, Litmus itself. So let me uh, now talk about, um, well, if you are going ahead and implementing chaos, what are the common security questions that are asked about or challenges that, uh, that you generally face? And then Raj will talk about um, how you can actually uh, do that in Litmus, right? So first is um, uh, who can run chaos experiments, right? So um, you need to, we have a control plane, but then you need to integrate with your authentication systems or authorization systems in your uh, organization, right? So you want to be able to give secure access to the control plane, so that's, that's one. And uh, the second one is um, you don't want to open up all your environments for chaos, uh, it becomes really chaotic, right? So you want to be able to um, give uh, certain environments to certain people, right? And then you know, how do you isolate uh, namespaces separately for chaos engineering? That's the second question. And the third challenge is, um, uh, I want to start chaos uh, only on some services to begin with, but my cluster has a lot of services, including the critical ones. For example, um, I want uh, to start chaos on a logging service, but not really on my order service, right? Uh, where payments are going through. Uh, let me first start uh, this month uh, on doing chaos on uh, my less critical services, how do you actually configure such controls, right? So that's, uh, that's a security question as well. And then um, chaos can be uh, having a high blast radius. Uh, for example, zone failures, network failures, they can bring down uh, your entire systems. Uh, rather, I would want to start only with, um, you know, pod deletes or CPU ho hogs, memory hogs, maybe network latencies, but not network losses. And I want to uh, only certain people to go and um, be able to do this network uh, losses, for example. So we use uh, Kaiverno, uh, it's another uh, project, um, part of the foundation. You can integrate with Ka Kaiverno and set some security policies around that. So we'll, we'll talk through that. And uh, privilege uh, escalation is, is very important, right? So how do you manage uh, privileges uh, through security, um, for security through service accounts is another challenge. And um, uh, ultimately, once you roll out your chaos uh, uh, practice in your organization, you don't want everybody to come and keep touching it, right? So um, this is another good security practice. Uh, keep it automated. If you are running something securely, better run it in an automated fashion rather than you know manually uh, your team members coming and executing it. So uh, how do you keep things um, in a low touch basis? So we use GitOps. Uh, we have GitOps um, capabilities that can be automated. Um, so um, chaos can be uh, totally integrated for GitOps, so you can do that as well. So these are uh, some of the security questions that uh, we keep hearing from you know community and other users. So we'll try to provide uh, those answers uh, on how exactly you do that uh, through certain demos. Yeah, thanks. Uh, hey everyone, uh, thanks Uma. Uh, so uh, I'll try to answer all these common questions which uh, uh, our community and our user keep asking. 
and uh, and to start with we have the first question like who can run the kiosk experiment so the question is like is it open for everyone uh, like is, is there any authentication or is there any authorization so uh, let's go to the next slide and here uh, you can see uh, we have a tightly integration with dex dex is a open idc and it's open source where uh, you, you can define your own uh, oauth providers so for example uh, i have defined my uh, oauth providers like github google so uh, you can define your own oauth providers with the integration there is a configuration of dex where you have to put your client id and client secret and uh, that's all you have to do uh, for uh, for setting up for all all oauth providers so here you can see uh, we have a user right and a user basically it's an authenticated user and uh, he, he first uh, see this screen the login screen and he can use uh, uh, the, the the any of the oauth provider and uh, and once it is authenticated so dex will uh, try to communicate with the oauth any of the oauth and it will get the callback uh, based on the successful authentication and uh, once it got authenticated uh, that then user will be authenticated for litmus uh, and and you can see there is a mongodb we store the credentials in a secure way in a proper hash format uh, if it is a, if it is a normal user login then we store uh, hash and, and if it is a oauth then we store some uh, some ids and all and uh, and once it is authenticated you can see we have few roles like ownership uh, owner role editor role and viewer role so owner is like an admin and he can do anything like deletion of project creation of project to inviting users and all this thing and next we have editor editor have a little bit less uh, privilege than the admin where editor can execute the experiment stop the experiment and a few other stuff and we have the viewer permission uh, viewer permission is basically uh, only to view the experiment or view the result and all these things and, and all things are under one project so we are a project based uh, thing where you can create multiple projects i'll go uh, in in some other next slides and and let's see some some with, uh, something with dex and uh, if you see here i have already set up one uh, uh, environment uh, one second yeah so this is the dex login page and uh, and i'll go with github and i can continue so it is authenticated uh, uh, dex is trying to authenticate with the word provider and once it, it is successfully authenticated it will get a callback and the callback uh, will go to the the kiosk center dashboard and this is the kiosk center dashboard and uh, we have other uh, uh, word providers like google and all uh, that i'll not go through it and uh, i'll go to the second question now uh, yeah uh, so the second question is how we can isolate the kiosk uh, uh, to to a particular environment right you may have uh, production uh, uh, environment or you may have uh, some other application running in different different namespaces right and and how to isolate uh, those uh, environments uh, we'll uh, we'll go through that part and let's start with that and here you can see uh, litmus have two uh, two scope one is the cluster scope and another one is the namespace scope with cluster scope you can uh, access a whole namespace but uh, all of the namespace but i'll talk about the namespace scope only in the namespace scope you can see uh, we have three users and three users are uh, are uh, uh, communicating with different different delegates and and different delegate is communicating to the main uh, project here uh, all all the namespaces are totally isolated but it's not fully isolated right because uh, here you can see all the users are tied with the one project so that's why we have the multi project system and where you you can assign user for a particular project for example if you are having a test project you can assign your user to the test project and give access to the uh, test delegate or if you uh, are having some production project you can you can give uh, access to the production delegate so by this you can isolate whole uh, namespaces uh, uh, based on the requirement of the of the application and uh, and the third question is uh, about how to ensure critical services are untouched so here uh, if we go yeah, uh, so here you can see uh, we have uh, we have three users under one project and uh, and we have one delegate and uh, we have uh, certain namespaces so for example uh, you have a cube system namespace that you usually don't want to uh, do chaos on that right 
So here uh, you can give uh, some uh, service account and uh, you can create some role and role, uh, role binding and role and tied all this thing for particular namespace. Uh, for example, if I don't want to give uh, a permission uh, to e execute for a cube system, you can do that. Uh, and uh, and you can see uh, we have another uh, thing where you can restrict the users that is the teaming uh, teaming is basically uh, we have the user management uh, where you can invite your users right uh, to a uh, to a project or you can create multiple project where you uh, you can give access for example ownership access edit access access or, or, or the viewer access like you can see you can invite your enable team member directly to this project and so once they accept the invitation uh, they can access the whole project and uh, now uh, we have uh, the fourth question and that is how, how to control uh, what fault you can inject so uh, so uh, we have something called uh, uh, kiosk service account so uh, kiosk service account is basically the a service account we uh, created during the delegate installation that is called litmus admin and litmus admin ha have more privilege it can run any any experiment uh, from port delete to network loss to cpu org so to restrict that we have we have introduced uh, the your service account for for experiment for dedicated experiment so for example uh, uh, if you go to this uh, slide right here you can see uh, uh, you, you, the service account you can see here uh, the this 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 is one of the pod and the service account and the delegate can access this pod but it can't access this pod because it, it, it doesn't have that permission so we'll demonstrate this uh, using a small demo so uh, for that uh, i have created some scenarios uh, or we can directly go and execute it so uh, we'll just uh, schedule one experiment uh, on Uh, this is the cluster mode agent. We'll select the agent. We'll select a uh, uh, experiment from the hub. Uh, let's start with that. And we'll add one experiment called uh, network partition. So uh, we'll give this. Uh, network partition experiment uh, with with, uh, with some faulty uh, service account so so just to check if uh, if we uh, give this service account and uh, will it able to execute that experiment or not so we'll just uh, uh, edit this one and give uh, a faulty service account you can find the kiosk service account kiosk service account here you can see the by default we have the litmus admin litmus admin means it can execute any experiment but uh, we will give some faulty uh, service account port delete let's see and we'll save the changes and next next and we'll just schedule it now so here's the summary and uh, and maybe we can edit this experiment network or or let me network partition and here we go so this will take some time. Uh, so uh, from uh, from for that time being, I, I can show you some uh, older result. So this this is one of the experiment I ran before the demo. And if you go and check the result, uh, you can see it, it, the experiment has been failed. And to check why it is failed, we can go to that. Uh, we can click on the node. And here we have two sections. One is logs, where you can find in the logs also, and uh, that result will be very quick uh, overview. And we'll just go to the result, and at the bottom you can see uh, the to, uh, it, it is giving the, us the error because it is not able to create the network policy. So, so the partition experiment leverages the network policy Kubernetes network policy, but it is not able to create the network policy because we gave a faulty service account. So by that you can define your own service account for dedicated experiment. So it it will uh, reduce a lot of uh, a lot of errors and all. And uh, and and uh, we have the fifth one uh, that is uh, basically the uh, why what what privilege do uh, you run the uh, 
chaos with so uh, here uh, we have a integration with kiverno kiverno is a policy engine uh, made for kubernetes and i'll just quickly explain uh, how we integrated with kiverno and you can see uh, uh, th th there is a delegate and uh, and th there are some policies installed in kiverno you can use anything oh, oh. Uh, PSP also or, or OpenShift uh, policies also, but we have used Kiverno. So uh, so uh, let's go to that uh, hub. So this is the hub uh, Git repository, and I'll just go there and check this policy. We'll we'll going to execute this network loss with restricted host namespace usage. So if we go to the policy and check the policy, and uh, this is a typical Kiverno policy. Kiverno have uh, uh, validation mutation and audit we are using only validation that will restrict uh, the uh, experiment to run and you can see uh, at the bottom right we can we can focus on uh, on this area only you can see all our uh, required permissions right host pid host ipc and host network everything is false that means it will not able to run this experiment this network experiment and this is kind of a net negative test uh, we just want to do and we'll just use this policy. This policy is already installed uh, uh, in, in the cluster. And we'll just quickly uh, execute this experiment. And to execute this, uh, we'll just again go to the schedule experiment. We'll select the namespace, uh, uh, scope kiosk delegate. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll just select the uh, scenario from the hub. We have that uh, KubeCon hub. And and this is the experiment we want to run and our policy is already installed on that delegate I'll just go next and this is just a predefined uh, description and name we can just ignore for now and here you can see uh, we are going to target uh, this namespace for this label and we'll see uh, if this experiment is able to execute or not uh, we'll just uh, uh, select the default one next and we are just going to schedule it now and this summary looks good yeah uh, so again it will take some time because uh, the experiment will uh, maybe uh, it will take three to five minutes so uh, we, we can just check some older result uh, to check the old, older result I'll just type the same thing network loss and you can see uh, some of the experiment has been uh, failed uh, uh, during the uh, run and I'll just click here and check the node and uh, you can again you can check in the logs or you can go to the result and if you go to the bottom here uh, you can see uh, the permission the enable to create helper pod uh, so liver uh, keyword no use admission webhook so this is uh, this is the error where admission webhook uh, validate keyword no it is unable to create uh, that uh, <coughs> experiment so this is uh, uh, about uh, the Kiverno integration and again we can run some positive positive test cases for example uh, let's go with a positive one so uh, there's one experiment called uh, uh, yeah so th there is an experiment called pod CPU hog and for pod CPU hog if you open the policy and uh, again uh, we have a lot of validation so so here you can see we are giving uh, we are giving uh, sysadmin access. That means uh, it has uh, the access to do the uh, stress on that uh, CP uh, on that pod, and uh, we have a few more capabilities. And uh, you can see uh, it is the privilege mode is true at the bottom. You can see the privilege is true, and and the socket path is already set. That is container D. And these are these are, uh, this is one of the positive test cases. And uh, let's start uh, by running this experiment. Again, we'll select the namespace agent two. Next, uh, and we'll, we'll select from a hub. Next, uh, okay, uh, I have to select the scenario. Uh, the scenario uh, was uh, port CPU work with uh, restrictive policies. Next, next. So uh, we'll again target this application. So uh, for this, we have to add one annotation. Uh, uh, I just to add one annotation. Uh, not annotation. It's a label we have to add for that policy. Just uh, 
this uh, we have to select this label and add it in the kiosk engine next we have to save it next we will just select the default values uh, we will schedule it now and again uh, it is scheduling right now and again if you see the old result right and go to this uh, page and uh, this is one of the old result and if you check uh, this one where it got uh, okay one second so there is one more experiment So you can see uh, this experiment uh, with that policy, it is able to run that uh, experiment uh, with the correct policy injection. Uh, so that uh, we can uh, use Kiverno. Uh, this is one of the way we can uh, uh, reduce the risk. And uh, and we have uh, one last question that is uh, how, how we can make yours low touch. So uh, we know we are humans, we make mistake, right? Uh, even a single manifest change or single configuration change make uh, the production goes down so uh, so for that uh, we have GitOps with Kios engineering uh, kios, uh, with litmus kios so we have uh, two kind of GitOps one is front end GitOps and another one is the back end GitOps so uh, uh, so front end GitOps uh, we will not talk about front end GitOps we will talk about the back end GitOps that is all, all about the automation so for the back end GitOps uh, they, they, there is a controller called event tracker you can see uh, I will just make it large there's a there's a, a pod called event tracker that is basically a Kubernetes controller, and it is backed by some policy. Just like Kiverno, uh, event tracker also have some policy. So po what policy is like? So it is tracking all of the pods, right? And it is checking one policy. In the policy, you have to define. For example, if my image got changed from image one to image two, the policy uh, will uh, get automatically informed the event tracker, and event tracker what will will send an event to the GraphQL server that is the uh, main server and the GraphQL server will send some kiosk to that particular application which is subscribed to. So you can see uh, for example uh, I am changing an image from or let's say I am changing replica 3 to 2 and I want to check uh, if my uh, if we decrease the replica will it going to be resilient or not right then then uh, then we can create those kind of policy and we are using JMS path so you can define your own query using JMS path and and, uh, and if, if you decrease the replica it will automatically trigger uh, uh, an event tracker will inform the server server will send uh, some kiosk uh, for example port delete kiosk or some other kiosk to that particular application Auto it will automatically execute it and, and uh, once it is executed it will get the result and get the final uh, thing Thank you, Raj. Uh, we had to rush through a lot of these scenarios because we have got 30 minutes slot. <laughs> I ideally would have loved to uh, run a, a detailed demo of this, but um, all these examples that uh, we just uh, showed will be uh, added to the uh, documentation. You can go through this recorded session as well. So uh, let me talk through quickly about uh, the second uh, question uh, that um, was brought up in the beginning. Uh, what uh, if you had to run some chaos experiments to check the security itself, what are the common scenarios for that, right? Uh, some of the security chaos experiments that you can think of are, uh, in general, uh, do I get access to my S3 buckets? Uh, did anyone publish a public S3 bucket in my organization? Or um, is anybody able to open some public uh, uh, instance ports, uh, ports to in public instances? or um, you know load test and do the denial of service attacks or um, is anybody able to uh, you know mount a host path into my uh, pods etc cetera, etc cetera. so these are the scenarios where you can write some chaos experiments and then you know see uh, if any security vulnerabilities are being introduced into your organization or not so um, there are going to be uh, more and more examples of how you can use Litmus uh, to introduce uh, verification of security uh, within your uh, deployments or not. 
but um, that's that's a topic for a future um, you know uh, session. Um, but uh, litmus has evolved uh, over a period of time uh, quickly in about 30 seconds. Uh, we are now at litmus 3.0 beta, um, which uh, uh, if you see our current journey, uh, we have a full stack of uh, a stable infrastructure to run chaos. And from here, we are going to make uh, Litmus easy for developers to use. So what it means is that uh, you're going to uh, see some chaos libraries that are thin and lean so that you can actually pull them into your uh, pipelines by developers uh, very easily into your you know, GitHub Actions, et cetera, et cetera. So we have some examples of that uh, already in, um, in, in beta release and we are expecting to uh, complete all of this uh, in the next six months. So hopefully by next KubeCon, you will have uh, 3.0 out and I'm uh, you know, happy to receive any feedback, contributions, it's all uh, out there in the discussion threads in, in GitHub, right? Um, and also uh, please try to join the community. We expect uh, you know more issues uh, while you use Latmos or what's missing in terms of, uh, you know, you need more experiments or not. So we'll be happy to, um, you know, look at them and provide uh, some feedback. Um, so we have, uh, our Slack is as part of uh, Kubernetes Slack. There's a Latmos channel in Kubernetes Slack. Uh, you can see a good amount of traffic over there in the chatter. So please join and, uh, you know, um, provide some feedback. With that, uh, thank you again uh, for this uh, short session and uh, have a great rest of the conference.